Hello, in this lecture we will learn how to obtain a state space model of a direct current or a DC motor and how to simulate such a model using MATLAB's control system toolbox. Before we give a lecture offline, let us first explain why we are interested in modeling of DC motors. Well, DC motors are widely used as actuators in uh, mechatronics and robotics applications. For example, a servo motor is a basically a DC motor that has a feedback mechanism for uh, controlling its position. Here is the lecture outline. First, we are going to talk about derivation of differential equations describing the DC motor dynamics. Then we are going to introduce a state space model of the system and then we are going to simulate such a state space model uh, using MATLAB's control systems toolbox. Special emphasis will be placed on the simulations that uh, describe the system response with respect to step control signals and sinusoidal control signals and finally we are going to uh, simulate the system response to non-zero initial conditions. So what is a DC motor? A DC motor is basically a system that converts uh, an electrical energy or voltage into mechanical motion of its output shaft. A DC motor can be represented by the following block diagram. The DC motor is the block. Its input is the external control voltage and its outputs are the angle of rotation of its output shaft and the first derivative of the angle of rotation of its output shaft or angular velocity. For brevity, we will now discuss the uh, working principles of DC motors. We assume that the reader has at least some basic understandings of the main physical laws governing the behavior of DC motors. Now, figure 1a shows an electrical circuit that governs the electrical behavior of a DC motor. V is an external voltage that is used to control uh, the DC motor. I is the electrical current in the armature of the DC motor. R is the resistance and L is the inductance of uh, an armature of the DC motor. And E is electromotive force that opposes the external voltage. Figure 1b shows a free body diagram of the output uh, rotor shaft of a DC motor. T is the induced uh, torque that drives the, the, the shaft. W is the disturbance torque that usually opposes the induced torque T. And D is the damping force that slows down the motion of the system. Here, we should emphasize that the torque, that the mechanical torque T that drives the system is proportional to the current that again is proportional to the external voltage V. So, the voltage influences the torque T. On the other hand, the damping torque D is proportional to the first derivative of the rotation angle theta. A basic equation governing the mechanical dynamics of the motor is given by the equation 1. In equation 1, J is the rotor inertia, theta is the angle of rotation of the output shaft, and T is a mechanical torque developed in the motor. W is the disturbance torque and D is the damping torque. From the motor law, we know that the generated torque is proportional to the current I, where the coefficient of proportionality is given by the constant kt. That is, the generated torque is proportional to the armature current. On the other hand, the damping torque can be expressed by equation 3. 
in equation 3, the B constant is a constant relating the angular velocity theta dot and the damping torque D. By substituting the equation 3 and 2 in the equation 1, we obtain the equation 4. The equation 4 is the equation governing the dynamics of the output shaft of, uh, of the DC motor. On the other hand, the armature current has its own dynamics. From figure 1a, we can write the equation 5, where in equation 5, L is, a, is the inductance, R is the resistance, and EM is the back electromotive force. We know that the back electromotive force is given by the equation 6, that is the EM is proportional to the angular velocity. By combining equations 5 and 6, we obtain the equation 7. The equation 7 governs the behavior of the armature current. The equation describing the uh, mechanical motion of the output shaft of a DC motor and the equation describing the dynamics of the armature current are two equations describing the overall dynamics of a DC motor. Our next goal is to write these two equations in a state space form and to simulate such state space model for different initial conditions and for different control input voltages. The basic form of the state space model is given by the equation 10. X is a state vector, Y is the output vector, U is the control input, and D is this disturbance vector. The matrices A, B, W, and C are system matrices. To define the state space model, we first need to introduce the state space variables. The state space variables are introduced in the equation 11. The first state space variable x1 is equal to the rotational angle theta. The second state space variable is equal to the angular velocity. The third state space variable is equal to the current. And the output of the system is equal to the second state space variable or it is equal to the angular velocity. Finally, the control input is the actuation voltage V. Here are a few comments. We need three state space variables because the overall system order is equal to three. Then, the output equation can be selected in some other way. It is basically our choice. However, this choice should be in accordance with our practical ability to observe or measure the output variable. In our case, the output variable is angular velocity theta dot. That is, we assume that there is a sensor that is able to measure the angular velocity. By combining the definition of the state space variables with the two equations describing the dynamics of the system, we obtain the equation 12. The equation 12 can be written in a compact or, or its vector form given by equation 13. The equation 13 is the state space model of the system. Next, we explain how to simulate the state space model using the MATLAB's control systems toolbox. First, we need to define the system matrices. The system matrices are defined in the code lines 13 until 16. Then we augment the B matrix, which is a control input matrix, with W matrix, which is a disturbance matrix, in the total B total matrix. The code line 22 is used to define the state space model. And the code lines 24 until 29 are used to define a discretization vector of time samples. First, we simulate the system output when the control input is equal to a step control input signal. 
The step control input signal has the following form. U is the control input and T is time. And its graphical description has the following form. What do we expect as an output when the control input is equal to the step control input signal? Well, we expect that the system should track the control input signal. That is, it should have a damped behavior and should settle at certain steady state output. The code line 7 is used to define the step control input signal and the code line 20 is used to generate the output of the system. We use the MATLAB's function LSIM. The first input argument is the state space model. The second input argument is the control input vector that also contains the disturbance vector but in our case the disturbance is equal to zero and it also contains the discretization time vector. Figure 2 shows the numerical results. Figure 2a shows the control input signal and the figure 2b shows the output of the system. Figure 2b shows that the output of the system is highly and that the system is able to track the control input voltage. Using the same strategy, we generate uh, the system response to the sinusoidal input control voltage and the results are shown in figure 3. Figure 3a shows the control input signal and figure 3b shows the output of the system. Finally, finally we simulate the system response for non-zero initial condition. We assume that the initial condition is basically the vector of ones and the following code generates the system response. We use the MATLAB's function initial to generate the initial state response. The results are shown in figure four. From figure four, we can observe that the effect of the initial conditions decays to zero after a certain time. Here, the control input is equal to zero and the disturbances are equal to zero. This indicates that the system is stable. As a conclusion, in today's lecture, we learn how to simulate a state-based model of a DC model. Everything that has been stated in this lecture can be generalized to other system types.